So it looks like we're getting a new balance patch in Splatoon 3 tomorrow. So today I wanted to um, go and see what this balance patch has to offer. So let's just get started without any further ado. So this is going to be version 2.1.0. Alright, main weapons. Aero spray. Size of terrain area inked by falling spray has been increased by about 10%. So aero spray is getting a painting buff. Jet Squelcher, reduced blow when firing on land by 17%. So that's reducing um, RNG, shooting RNG, while uh, on the ground, which is pretty cool. Splattershot Nova, the size of terrain area inked by shots has been increased by about 19%. That's uh, also a painting buff for the Nova shot, which is also pretty good. Uh, Dynamo Roller, the damage rate reduction caused by distance has been adjusted. You can now cause 50 damage or 100 damage from farther away than before. So this is basically increasing the um, fall off range where you're not, you're not hitting direct shots but it is increasing that um, you know, range of fall off damage. Big Swig Roller, the minimum damage from horizontal slashes has increased from 30 to 35. This is a good thing, Big Swig really needs a damage buff. In my opinion, what they can do is at least give it the ability to roll over people, because right now, as it is, it's just it's, it's not good at all. Bamboozler, reduced in consumption by about 17%. Um, that's cool, I guess. I don't think it's going to be that much better for the weapon, because uh, almost no one plays this weapon anyway because of its kit. Maybe if it had a burst bomb, it would be back in the meta, but right now, without MPU, it's uh, kind of worthless. Nautilus 47, increased firing duration by about 15%. Okay, this is good for the Nort players. Sloshing Machine, increased ink consumption by about 10%. So they are nerfing Machine, which I find kind of weird because if anything, Crab Tank needs a nerf. And Machine was the main counter to Crab Tank. So if they're going to nerf Machine, then that's going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? Next, sub weapon changes. Angle shooter damage has been increased from 30 to 35. Yes, finally, we got a damage buff for this thing. So, before this was a four shot kill, which was painful, but now it's become a three shot, which is definitely a little bit better. So, now maybe with the new um, jet squelcher buff, we might be seeing. Uh, other people using line marker slash angle shooter a lot more so that's that's definitely a good thing the radius of ink coverage when striking terrain or opponents has been roughly doubled okay painting buff as well not going to be doing much for it since it's just a line that hits the ground but still nice to have specifications for some special weapons have changed uh, Tacticula. Tacticula's quick respawn and special saver will no longer be negated by gear abilities, respawn puncher and haunt. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Because back then, uh, respawn punisher and haunt were the main counters to Tacticula. But then again, Tacticula isn't that useful. Because um, of how it is, it, it forces everyone to come to a specific point and it it just becomes a bit of a nuisance on the team because in splatoon the main thing that you do on a team is you have to control an area and by controlling an area you have to actually be in that spot but if you're going to move from there just to go grab a quick tacticaler that's going to give your teammates ample time to push in or to completely disrupt your plan unless you do it really really well uh, respawn Punisher and Haunt effects, increase in respawn time and increase in amount of special gauge loss will still occur. Okay, so it's not going to respawn almost instantly, but it will take a little bit longer than um, like a full QR build with the Tacticaler. Next, Reef Slider, adjusted the amount of time for the invulnerability window, which occurs after exploding until you are able to move to about 28 out of 60 of a second. So this looks like it's going to be buffing the um, 
Reef Slider. Reef Slider already has a big problem in that it has a lot of uh, vulnerability frames uh, after the explosion is done. So uh, what you would normally do is just wait out the explosion and then throw a bomb or shoot at the Reef Slider user or something and then that'll just kill them instantly. It's like a splashdown cancel but in Splatoon 3. But um, hmm. I don't know if I should say I'm glad they're changing it because you don't want to buff it too much because otherwise it can be a really really strong ability like the Kraken was with almost no uh, lag frames at all but we'll have to see how this works in the game I'm, I'm glad that one of the worst specials in the game is getting a buff next tripling strike increase the radius of the area damage by about 10% increase damage inflicted by about 50% yes Yes, that is that is what I've been waiting for. A tri strike buff. I I'm a ton of text blind shot main and I I feel like the tri strike was pretty much the biggest weakness of the kit and I know a lot of other people do too. But now tri strike is getting a buff. It's increasing the radius of the explosion by a ten percent and it is increasing its damage as well, which is also gonna be very good. I still wish you could swim with the Try strike active like you can with missiles or you could like use your main weapon like a bomb rush but this this is fine I like this next crab tank all right I'm, I'm eager to see what they have here shorten the duration of the crab tank when not using special power-up gear ability from about nine seconds to about eight seconds yes that is a good nerf it's not that big of a nerf like nine seconds to eight but it is something that like is going to have an impact on crab tank in the meta because one second in splatoon time is quite a lot if you can let's say reduce your respawn time by one second that is that is a long time so this is definitely going to help uh, i wish they would nerf it by just a little bit more maybe like a 7.5 but that, that might be a bit too extreme. We'll have to see how it does in the current meta. Especially with uh, machine nerfed, by the way. So we saw the machine getting nerfed. This might not have as much of an effect as we think it will. But we really have to wait and see. Increase the extension rate of the duration of the crab tank when using special power-up gear ability. As a result of these changes, the duration of crab tank when maximizing use of the special power up gear ability remains the same as before. So it it kind of means that if you have enough SPU, you can get to pretty much the same um, duration of the crab tank as you could with a f with SPU back then. So it's it's just nerfing its base duration, but with the special power up, it can go back to its old duration it's it's essentially buffing special power up just for crab tank next points required for weapon specials have been changed spider shot hero shot replica has become y90p which i guess is fine i um kind of abandoned those ever since the t-tech dropped Point fifty two one ninety point ninety six one ninety. that might not change a whole lot maybe point fifty two might get some use out of that because whale is useful with Pro 52 Splattershot Pro 180p crab hmm a 180p crab tank right so Splattershot Pro does not paint well we know that so maybe a 180p crab would have about the same effect as a 200p splash but it's still 180p which is quite a little next splash on nova before 200 now 190 um that's good because whale uh splash on nova needs whale more than arguably any other weapon in the game splat jewel is 190p crab um same here actually because uh with splash it does definitely paint better than julie's but julie's paint really well too and now you're giving it a lower points for special to get the crab the best special in the game so yeah we'll, we're seriously gonna have to wait and see anyway with the duration nerf it might have about the same effect since you do t uh, take a little more than a second to get that extra 10p that you need 
C Junior, uh, from 180 to 190. So this one, um, C Junior was a very good weapon for spamming wave breakers, and wave breakers are a very good way to deal with crabs, because the crab needs to like ball up so it can jump over them. But now they are increasing it so that there will be less wave breaker spam. Now I don't think this is going to be a huge problem. It is just 10p on a weapon that can paint incredibly well, but it is going to affect the weapon just slightly. Sloshing machine 210 to 220. So this one I don't understand. They're buffing. They're, they're nerfing crab to balance the meta, but they are nerfing the thing that was the main counter to crab. If crab did not exist, it is very very likely that machine would not see as much use in the current meta. But now they're just nerfing both of them, which I find a bit weird. So 220p booyah with the machine which is fine it's just an extra 10p but still i find it really weird that they're nerfing both of them uh wiper 190p stamp not really much of a uh much of a problem because uh wiper did have a painting buff earlier and anyway stamp doesn't really do too much for wiper stamp is one of the worst specials in the game extremely vulnerable it's very situational it's only good for dealing with crabs and stuff but other than that, I don't think this is going to affect the weapon that much. Performance of some gear abilities have been changed. Ninja Squid. Ink Splash will no longer be visible for half a second immediately after transforming into kid form. Using the gear ability Swim Speed Up at the same time will no longer result in one of these abilities being cancelled. While using Ninja Squid, Swim Speed will continue to be reduced by a fixed amount. Okay, so... What this says is that they're at the top here they're buffing one part of Ninja Squid where you won't be able to see an ink splash if you uh, transform back into a humanoid form. And using Swim Speed Up will not result in one of the abilities being cancelled. So pretty much what that means is that at all times Ninja Squid will reduce the Swim Speed by a fixed amount. And... Um, it won't like cancel out the, the swim speed will not necessarily cancel out the ninja squid so um, I wonder how this is going to work actually because first of all the way that this is worded makes it very difficult to understand in fact I think I might have gotten the definition wrong but we'll see how it is afterwards you can check sendu.inc to see um, a build analyzer and see how the speeds change and everything it has the numbers it has the uh, units moved per second the speed and everything so you can go check that out there after the patch drops and you'll be able to see what this ability is saying but right now the way that it's worded it can mean multiple things it can mean um, ninja squid can no longer be cancelled by swim speed in other words like no matter how much swim speed you put the ninja squid will still reduce it by an amount. Um, it could mean that you know you putting swim speed up is almost worthless because it's just going to reduce by a fixed amount. It could also mean that you would need more swim speed up to counteract it. Uh, it's it's very difficult to understand. So we'll wait and see until the patch drops and see what it is like. For me personally, I don't think it's going to do too much impact for me because I only use three subs of swim speed anyway with my ninja squid so yeah we'll see we'll see how it is afterwards this update focuses on adjustments related to battles a lot of the adjustments to main weapons were made to lessen the impact of some weapons from splatoon 2 where the increased performance of the gear ability was negated in splatoon 3 regarding changes to ninja squid while mitigating the issue where players could lose sight of each other when shooting at each other from a relatively short distance were also intentionally maintaining the way to approach opponents with longer ranges so these are just like some uh, you know overview overall like comments about the current update so yeah that is um, that's good let's see reduce the amount needed to sp to fill special gauge for some weapons within that group and str uh, strengthen some frequently used short range weapons to increase player options. We increased the amount needed to fill special gauges for some weapons 
and within that group curtailed somewhat the tactic of using sub weapons and special weapons to attack from a distance. That is <laughs> that is machine. Just using fizzy bombs and booyah bombs to attack from a distance. That is definitely machine. Uh, was it reduce the amount? Which one did they reduce? Uh, they reduce these short range shooters, yeah, to, to get in, right? Because you use your whale to get in. Uh, what else? We've also made some adjustments to increase manifestation of special weapons. The next update will focus on new features and weapon balance for the start of the new season in March. The update is planned for the end of the current season. So this is the last, likely the last balance patch that we're getting until the next season, which is going to be uh, 1st of March. So hopefully we'll be seeing some new stuff then. Bug fixes. I really hope that they fix the big swig glitch on Eeltail. But let's see. Fix an issue that allows players to climb through unclimbable walls when using squid surge and squid roll at the same time. Fix an issue where if you're submerged in ink on a wall and you move to any ground of a certain angle and continue to move while submerged, your movement speed is reduced. Fix an issue where shots fired from a blob blobber at a tower or other moving terrain features would hit and disappear rather than hit and rebound. Fix an issue where a player is moving or jumping with an open umbrella. The area being protected from it coming in is about 1 60th of a second behind where it appears to be. So they're, they're fixing the umbrella lag thingy where, um, you know, the shield will actually start to work well, <laughs> hopefully. Fix an issue where a player lands with an open umbrella. They are stunned and the umbrella seems to sink into the ground. Fix an issue where the area being protected from incoming ink by an open umbrella is slightly to the left or right of where it appears to be. Fix an issue where the animation of opening an umbrella to protect from attacks happens slower than the actual defensive effect begins. Fix an issue where the animation of closing an umbrella during the opening during the umbrella opening animation was not displaying smoothly. Fix an issue where attacks to the rear of crab tank like ink storm bounce off while the tank is in walking mode even when directly striking the player this is good crab tank bug nerf thingy fixed an issue where having used the inkjet or zip caster without once touching the ground the player lands in an unintended location fixed an issue where the wave breaker immediately vanishes from other player screens if the elevation of its placement is close to the waterline is that for salmon run I don't know about many stages that have a waterline, uh, except maybe Bahi. That's not really a line, it's still technically a ledge. Fix an issue where if the wave breaker is placed at a specific elevation, its waves do not display in adjacent lower spaces within the area of effect. Fix an issue where if the wave breaker is placed at a specific elevation, adjacent lower spaces may or may not come with the area of effect due to slight differences in position by slightly increasing the area of effect in the lower area. So what this means is that you know how the wave breaker makes those waves and the waves can go like on different elevations, like they can go down and up walls and things. Uh, apparently there was a bug that stopped them from going down, which was a bit weird. So they're fixing that bug, which is good. Changes to multiplayer. Fixed an issue where if you ink certain parts of the terrain in Eeltail Alley with a roller, it causes a slowdown in the game. Yes, good. Good fix. This really needed fixing. Uh, if you guys want to get banned, you can go and try this out while um, it's still in the game right now. But please do not do that. You're just making the game unfun for everyone, including yourself. Fix an issue when playing Rainmaker mode in Hagglefish Market that caused the score to not change smoothly in certain areas. I feel like I experienced this once. I'm not entirely sure. But it is a good thing that they're going to fix that. Fix an issue when playing Splat Zones, Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clam Blitz modes in Undertow Spillway that prevented you from being able to submerge in ink in certain areas, regardless of whether they were inked or not. This was an issue in... Um, the training lobby as well. I actually have a clip of this on my Switch where I inked a wall and I I tried to swim in it, but it didn't swim. It just acted as if there was no ink on the thing. I tried inking it again and it's still just like 
I, I went into squid form and I just kind of waddled across the ground. I didn't actually go in the ink, which was a little bit weird. I could actually play that clip right now. I uh, fixed an issue where, when playing Rainmaker mode in Museum Dalfon Sino, that caused the score to not change smoothly in certain areas, same thing as Hevelfish. Fixed an issue that allowed you to climb unintended walls in Ink Blot. Is that the one uh, where you get to the spawn point? Um, not sure, hopefully not, because I like that bit. So you can jump kill people jumping back to spawn, which was quite fun. Fixed an issue when playing Splat Zones mode in Mahi Mahi Resort that prevented players from properly placing a tact cooler in certain areas and prevented the player who tried to place it from being able to properly stand on the stage's terrain. Fixed an issue when playing Rainmaker mode in Sturgeon Shipyard that caused the score to not change smoothly in certain areas. Same thing in Mako Mart. Fixed an issue that allowed you to climb unintended walls in Wahoo World. Fixed an issue in Wahoo World that allows you to jump from an ink rail onto a spotlight. There are spotlights in Wahoo World? <laughs> I never noticed. Uh, fixed an issue in Brinewater Springs that caused trees in front of you to not display as transparent. Fixed an issue when playing Splatoon's Tower Control Rainmaker Clan Blitz modes in Brinewater Springs that caused the score to not change smoothly in certain areas and don't retreat to be displayed even if you weren't retreating very much. Fixed an issue in Brinewater Springs and Flounder Heights that caused ink fired from up high to disappear before hitting the ground. Fixed an issue when playing Splatoon's Tower Control Remake and Clam Blitz modes in Flounder Heights that allowed you to jump from an ink rail onto a water tank. Once again, I did not know there were water tanks in Flounder Heights. Changes to Salmon Run. Fixed an issue where if a communication error occurred at a certain time while the big run results were being announced, you would not be able to get the corresponding badge. If you were affected by this issue, you'll be able to obtain your badge after applying this update and restarting the game. Fixed an issue that caused ammo stocked up in the Sniper Rider 5H to disappear after depositing golden eggs or shooting them from a big shot launcher. Fixed an issue that prevented bombs launched by a steelhead to disappear properly when the steelhead was defeated by dealing damage to its torso. Fixed an issue in Maroonas Bay during low tide that makes it difficult to ink over Flipper Flopper's area of attack if it tried to dive close to the water surface. I've actually experienced this many, many, many times. Um, I did not know if it was a bug or if it was intentional, but turns out it was a bug and I'm glad they're going to fix it because that was a huge pain to deal with. You had to wait for the Flipper Flopper to come almost completely on land. Fixed an issue in Maroonas that caused a slowdown to occur if players or salmonids came into contact with certain terrain. Fix an issue where if you have a job scenario with Grisco weapons and played it again as a private job, different Grisco weapons would be supplied instead. Changes to story mode. Fix an issue where selecting weapons on a stage and switching from umbrella to another weapon, the umbrella will not work properly. It may not launch or it may not protect from enemy attacks. Other changes. Fix an issue in recon where game controls will not work after trying to start Turf War and Photo Mode at the same time when playing with multiple people. Fix an issue in Recon when playing with a timer and the player was splattered. The photo pose would remain as the player pose if specific procedures were performed. Fix an issue in Recon where when, when playing with a timer and the player was splattered, the countdown number would not display. Fix an issue where after having failed to save job history at the Grisco Terminal, the list of completed jobs would not properly display. And finally, fix an issue in shops where after pressing certain buttons at the same time, some controls would not work. So there we go, that's the balance patch of version 2.1.0, which is going to be releasing today. So yeah, I'm glad that they're nerfing Crab Tank. I am skeptical about the fact that they're nerfing Machine. I am very, very happy about the fact that they're buffing Tri-Strike. 
and a lot of other stuff is getting uh, more viability like jet squelcher and things so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more be sure to like and subscribe and check out all my other splatoon videos in the description so yeah see you guys next time bye bye